Hello everybody, welcome into the nursery room here, aka the green room, as I am desperately waiting spring and summer and uh, getting a start on all my plants. I thought today we'd take a look at what is left of last year's pepper shrine and then, uh, well, we might as well take a look at some of the seedlings that I've tried to start so far this year. So I guess we'll start with what's left of the pepper shrine. Here's that Tabasco pepper that has spent some time in the stairwell and in the bedroom and wherever else I thought it would get some decent light. Camera doesn't want to focus today, but... So far this sucker is still alive. Excellent. Leaves me hopeful for, uh, you know, might just make it till spring and summer. Get a jump start on growing. Maybe we can get some serious Tabasco production going this year. Then back here we've got the El Jefe. Not looking great, but uh, still alive. Still alive. I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea to spot wash these leaves, but I don't know. Welcome to feedback on that one. Just up above them here, we temporarily have the super chili. It's been hanging out downstairs by the desks. You can see one of the random ladybugs on it there. An awful lot of work to be done. I think at last count we saw three ladybugs, so that's still not fabulous, but it's not bad, not bad. Over here, under the hydro lamp, we've got the two pimento peppers, which uh, are still, you know, like so many of these these other plants, they're they're still alive, but they're not looking fabulous. And in the back, what do we have back there? Ah, uh, that is the last cherry bomb pepper, and it is covered with aphids too. So, hopefully, those ladybugs will reproduce and give me some larvae that'll want to mow down on that little buffet. But that's all that's really left of the 2015 shrine. Two pimentos, a cherry bomb, an el jefe, a tabasco, and a super chili. But really, considering we moved to Manitoba in the fall, and I still have some of the plants alive, I'll take that as a win. Y'all know my philosophy by now on there are no failures in gardening, so yeah, I will definitely take that as a win. Let's take a look at some of the uh, seedlings I've got going around and uh, see how they're doing. Oh, I forgot to mention this pepper from the 2015 shrine. The Phileas Blue finally got itself transplanted into something slightly larger. So hopefully it will grow a little bit. Again, covered in aphids, but doing alright. Just behind it we've got the Wando Pea. It's uh, not focused very well, but it's growing. I turn this thing every couple of days and it turns itself back to the light, so I know at least it's getting enough light to react to. Here's that Royal Burgundy Bush Bean, the only one that sprouted. Well, okay, two sprouted, and then the center leaf died in one, so I pulled it. But this one seems to be giving life a serious consideration, so gonna hope for the best there. Those tea seeds that I planted forever ago, still no signs of anything going on there. Definitely think I need a warmer. The one surviving lettuce seedling down there. Not doing very well. But it's still alive, so we'll let it grow. And back here, you can see I've done a little bit more planting since last time I brought you all in. So we'll take a quick look at some of these, but... Leggy as they may be, I got a lot of those kales that sprouted up. Definitely need some better lighting. Still have lots of things that haven't popped up yet, so I think we're just going to skip over that for now to save a little bit of time and go uh, take a closer look at the things that have sprouted up. I've got a couple of peppers that have started out of that recent planting. I've got sand dollar peppers there. Hoping they'll start to look a little bit better in a couple of days. And down there I've got the Alipu pepper just started sprouting up today so that's kind of exciting and then come what may of it we'll see I've got these sugar pie pumpkins this one started to sprout up I've got these uh, gallery galea I think basically it's a cantaloupe it started to sprout up we've got the doll baby watermelon sprouting up over there and the early honeydew starting to sprout up over there so that's pretty exciting to me anyway these little guys here are some Catskill Brussels sprouts. I didn't do terribly well back in 2012 when I grew the plant uh, previously, but I found it just, it's a fascinating plant. They're really funky to grow. So I'm going to try and do better this year. You can never really have too many Brussels sprouts. 
delicious things, eh? Next up, we've got those three Egyptian or walking or winter onions, whatever you want to call them, that I grabbed from the side yard before the snow arrived. I think these guys are going to get transplanted into something for the downstairs window. A lot of comments made about how nice it would be to have fresh onion greens and things. And here we've got the orange habaneros. Not all of these looking too great, and aphids on everything. But, you know, hopefully those ladybugs will, will do something to keep it in check, because not, you know, it's not all dying on me. It's just all covered in aphids. But, here are the orange habanero starts anyway. I was thinking about trying to transplant some of these out, but I haven't had the, a lot of luck with transplanting so far this year. Well, I guess next would be these two red Thai chili plants that are surviving. There were lots more of these, if you may recall, but I have tried transplanting them and uh, lost every one I have attempted to move. So, I now have two of these. Lots more seeds, though, so I'll undoubtedly plant more of those soon enough. Here we have those two little beefsteak tomato seedlings. Still doing all right. I don't see the aphids on them. Maybe aphids don't like tomatoes. Maybe I should plant more tomatoes to discourage the aphids then. And what is it? Marigolds, apparently. Maybe I should plant some marigolds. But anyway, these beefsteak tomatoes are, are looking like they've got some decent starts growing on. Should be doing just fine when it comes time to plant them outside. The little tiny oregano plants. So cute. But they're definitely oregano, and they're definitely still alive, so... Grow at whatever pace you want, little guys. The sweet basil from the 5th of January, starting to look a little bit more basil-like with some of those true leaves. Definitely got too many planted in there, definitely shy on the soil, but you know what? Survival of the fittest. We will see who makes it to the spring. It's the dark opal basil, not looking very happy at all. I tried a couple transplants out of here too, hence the big barren patch. And uh, yeah, none of those have gone well. But, still some of it alive, so again, survival of the fittest. If anything makes it, great! The sage. Here's another one that suffered a few uh, ill-fated transplants. The ones that I left in the starting cup seem to be doing alright. Two sets of true leaves. A little weak in the stem there, but I think maybe I'll just add a little more soil. Hopefully bulk it up that way. I don't know if that works with sage or not. I can do that right now before I forget. That's a little better bumped one of those leaves. These plants may not be very big, but they sure do have a wicked aroma developing already. That's wonderful. Can't wait to start harvesting you. Mwah, ah, ah. Grow a little sage. Grow. Early market Copenhagen cabbage. Look at that. A little on the leggy side, but sprouting. These are some really old seeds. I wasn't expecting them to sprout at all, so that's why there's so many in there. But can always thin it out or try and transplant it. Or thin it by transplanting. We'll see. Copenhagen cabbage. Decided to finally try these munchkin broccolis. Tried growing broccoli before, but I'm pretty sure those were from uh, plant starts that I got at the Art Naps. But we got two starts here. Not too crowded together, so hopefully these guys will be okay. Grow, grow, grow! Cauliflower. Now there's a word that's all over the interwebs these days. Six bucks each for these at our grocery store. I got three in here, so in theory that's an $18 cup of cauliflower, right? So we'll see, we'll see if I even get heads out of these guys or not. I'm not a huge fan of cauliflower, but uh, they say white foods are good for the immune system. And if they're charging six bucks a head for it at the grocery, yeah, I'll grow some. I'll find out what's so tricky about that. Focusing the camera seems to be a bit of a trick today, but that's all there is to that. 60 days or so, it says, from transplant. Be curious. 10 cents a day, huh? Grow! And then a parting shot of all those really leggy kales. The dino kale did really well. The red Russian kale sprouting up really well, and the dwarf blue is also sprouting up really well. Let's see if we can get it on the camera here, but I've got some true leaves already forming. Asking too much of the camera. Got some true leaves forming in there. So I'll probably transplant uh, one of each of those varieties to go downstairs in the kitchen window too. We'll see what comes of that. 
All right, everybody, and that's where I'm going to wrap it up today. Thank you so much for joining me, as always, and, uh, yeah, I will see you next time when we take a look at whatever. Have a great day, everybody.